Welcome to Celestial Chronicles, where we delve into the profound and timeless tales that have shaped our understanding of the world and ourselves. Today, we embark on a journey through the Book of Job, a masterpiece that challenges us with its deep questions and mesmerizing language. In this episode, we'll explore the poetic beauty and the dramatic dialogues between Job and his friends as they grapple with life's toughest trials. We'll unravel the irony, the rhetoric, and the sheer power of this ancient text, which still resonates with us today. So, if you're ready to dive into a story of faith, suffering, and the search for meaning, hit that subscribe button, and let's begin our exploration together. Remember, every story has its stars, and here at Celestial Chronicles, we illuminate them for you. Stay tuned! The Book of Job is one of the most celebrated pieces of biblical literature, not only because it explores some of the most profound questions humans ask about their lives, but also because it is extremely well written. The work combines two literary forms, framing 40 chapters of verse between two and a half chapters of prose at the beginning and the end. The poetic discourse of Job and his friends is unique in its own right. The lengthy conversation has the unified voice and consistent style of poetry, but it is a dialogue between characters who alter their moods, question their motives, change their minds, and undercut each other with sarcasm and innuendo. Although Job comes closest to doing so, no single character articulates one true or authoritative opinion. Each speaker has his own flaws as well as his own lofty moments of observation or astute theological insight. The interaction between Job and his friends illustrates the painful irony of his situation. Our knowledge that Job's punishment is the result of a contest between God and Satan contrasts with Job's confusion and his friends' lecturing, as they try to understand why Job is being punished. The premise of the friends' argument is that misfortune only follows from evil deeds. Bildad instructs Job, if you are pure and upright, surely then, God, will rouse himself for you and he later goads Job to be a blameless person, 8 colon 6, 8 20. The language in these passages is ironic, since, unbeknownst to Job or Job's friends, God and Satan do in fact view Job as blameless and upright. This contrast shows the folly of the three friends who ignore Job's pain while purporting to encourage him. The interaction also shows the folly of trying to understand God's ways. The three friends and Job have a serious theological conversation about a situation that actually is simply a game between God and Satan. The fault of Job and his friends lies in trying to explain the nature of God with only the limited information available to human knowledge, as God himself notes when he roars from the whirlwind, who is this that darkness counseled by words without the knowledge? The dominant theme of Job is the difficulty of understanding why an all-powerful God allows good people to suffer. Job wants to find a way to justify God's actions, but he cannot understand why there are evil people who harm the childless woman and do no good to the widow, only to be rewarded with long, successful lives. Job's friends, including Elihu, say that God distributes outcomes to each person as his or her actions deserve. As a result of this belief, they insist that Job has committed some wrongdoing to merit his punishment. God himself declines to present a rational explanation for the unfair distribution of blessings among men. He boasts to Job, have you comprehended the expanse of the earth? Declare, if you know all this, 38 colon 18. God suggests that people should not discuss divine justice since God's power is so great that humans cannot possibly justify his ways. One of the chief virtues of the poetry in Job is its rhetoric. The book's rhetorical language seeks to produce an effect in the listener rather than communicate a literal idea. God's onslaught of rhetorical questions to Job, asking if Job can perform the same things he can do, overwhelms both Job and the reader with the sense of God's extensive power as well as his pride. Sarcasm is also a frequent rhetorical tool for Job and his friends in their conversation. After Bildad lectures Job about human wisdom, Job sneers, how you have helped one who has no power, how you have assisted the arm that has no strength. Job is saying that he already knows what Bildad has just explained about wisdom. The self-deprecating tone and sarcastic response are rare elements in ancient verse. Such irony not only heightens the playfulness of the text, but suggests the characters are actively responding to each other, thus connecting their seemingly disparate speeches together. The poetry in Job is a true dialogue, for the characters develop ideas and unique personalities throughout the course of their responses. As we reach the end of our journey through the Book of Job here at Celestial Chronicles, we find ourselves reflecting on the profound themes we've encountered. Why does suffering exist? Can we ever truly understand the divine plan? These questions linger in our minds as we close the pages of this ancient text. Job's story is a testament to the enduring human spirit, and his dialogues with his friends remind us that our search for meaning is a shared experience. So, what do you think? Was Job's patience justified? Could you remain steadfast in the face of such trials? Share your thoughts in the comments below. 
and let's continue this conversation together. Thank you for joining us on this exploration of faith, wisdom, and the human condition. If you're intrigued by these timeless questions and want to delve deeper into the mysteries of our existence, make sure to subscribe to Celestial Chronicles. Until next time, keep looking up and questioning, for the answers are written in the stars above us.